Praise the Lord, precious saints, and welcome to another daily prophetic utterance to start your day. And today is day four of the four days of prayer and fasting for August of 2024. Somebody say hallelujah. And as we are pressing in and understanding what it truly means about wrestling in the spirit, about travailing, about weeping, about pressing in into God through prayer. We're learning about John Hyde. We're learning about how others have gone before us and prayed and brought about a change. Let me tell you, God is on the move. And then there was a story of D.L. Moody, who was a man of prayer and a great evangelist and revivalist. He was coming through a particular city in the 1800s called Rockhampton in New York and when the train was passing through the city when the train stopped in that city for over so many minutes uh, maybe an hour or so the whole city the atmosphere changed and there was a conviction of sin that just covered the whole place people were weeping and crying all over they felt the presence of God now this happened because a man of prayer came but what we also must understand that in the time of Charles Finney there was a revival that came to Rockhampton in New York where the same presence came as a result of Father Nash's prayers that those intercessors would come weeks before before Charles Finney came to the place and there was over a hundred thousand souls that gave their life to the Lord but people in the streets would come together under the conviction and start to pray and start to pray together in the streets in the shops wherever they were there was a conviction of God so imagine so many years later in Deal Moody's time the same city the same occurrence and phenomena happened when Deal Moody was just in the train stopping because he was a person of prayer because the Holy Spirit loves the the the, the prayers of people and also remembers Remembers the mighty moves that have happened in the past. It is time for us to dig into the wells of revival. If you haven't done this fast already, I encourage you to do it next weekend. Go through the Bible study. This is not no normal Bible study. This is anointed Bible studies to dig the wells of the revival and see God move in the nation's precious sense. But I've got a message to encourage encourage someone today so let us press in and hear the word of the lord hallelujah and i want to read from a portion of scripture according to ephesians 1 and it says and he put all things under his feet and gave him to be head of all things to the church hallelujah Everything has been placed under the feet of Jesus, including the devil. And so therefore, everything that has been placed under Jesus' feet is also placed under our feet precious saints. No matter what you are passing through, no matter the attacks of the enemy, no matter the problems, no matter the circumstances, no matter the situation that you are facing today, precious saints, it has all been placed under our feet when we move and walk in the authority of Jesus Christ. No matter what your problems are, whether they are emotional, whether they are financial, whether they are family and so forth, it has all been placed under the blood of Jesus Christ and we walk in authority and it is under our feet. Yes, we can walk on top of every one of these situations in the ordained authority that has been given to us as his church. Let us read from Psalm 91 verse 13. It says in the King James Version, Thou shalt tread upon the lion and adder, the young lion and the serpent you shall trample under foot. Hallelujah. See, this verse uses lions and adders 
to represent forces that are strong and fierce. It is literally talking about Satan and all of his minions and the demonic host. But if we're treading on something, it means that we are walking on it. And in this case, we are supposed to walk on the devils and the demons. Somebody say amen. That means Jesus has given you authority to trample upon, trample upon lions and cobras and so forth. Because the word Adder, according to uh, Psalm 91 verse 13, it also translates to serpent and cobra. So looking further at this word, we see that it carries with it the thought of a nest of snakes, precious saints. Spiritually speaking, this is referring to different types of demons. But no matter how many demons we may encounter, we have authority over all of them through the finished work of the cross. According to Deuteronomy 32 verse 33, it says, Their wine is the poison of serpents and the cruel venom of cobras. See, this talks about the cruel venom of cobras. And according to Romans 3 verse 13, it says, The poison of vipers is under their lips. See, this verse is referring to backbiting. It's referring to tail bearing and slandering of one person's name. And we have probably all experienced this within our lives. But Jesus has given us authority. Somebody say amen. See, when untrue words are spoken about us, we have been given authority even over those words. Because when we become victims of poisonous words, we must remember that we have the power to tread on what was said. The unkind, the cutting words and others that don't have to hurt us because we've been given authority over those words. We can walk over the lies and keep going. We can, we can walk through situations and not be affected because we know the authority that Christ has given to us on the cross, precious saints. Somebody say amen. God has got a plan for our lives and he wants us to overcome. He wants us to push forward. He wants us to keep going despite of the attacks of the enemy that may be coming against us today. God has given us that strength. God has given us that ability. God has given us his grace to overcome because weapons made to attack you will not prosper precious saints words spoken against you will not hurt you at all because Isaiah 54 verse 17 says that no weapon formed against you shall prosper and any tongue raised against you you shall condemn for this is the inheritance of the servants of the Lord and their righteousness is from me says the Lord, this is the power. He has given you the ability to tread upon even the lies, even the gossip, even the slandering of those, even the enemies that may be whispering your downfall, witchcraft, you name it, any evil eye, anything that is coming against you shall not even touch you, precious saints, because you are walking in authority. Somebody say amen. Precious saints, what he did on the cross is already done, but we've got to take it by faith. We've got to take what is rightfully ours, and it can be ours potentially. But how many Christians today, or how many of us today, potentially can move forward? Potentially, but are not moving in that act of faith that God has given to us. And unfortunately, there are far too many believers today. They know God's blessings belong to them, but they never possess them. We have to put our foot 
down and demand what God says about us is true, precious saints. We are victorious. We are healthy. We are prosperous and so forth. We must continue to confess and speak because we are not what this world, we are not what our circumstances, we are not what others say about us, but we are what the Word of God says we are and we stand upon His promises. Somebody say amen. It's time for you to move forward. The devil belongs under your feet. Hallelujah. Somebody say amen. We got to do something about it. We've got to put the the metal to the pedal, as they say. We've got to put the rubber to the road. We've got to do something. You can't just say, well, I'm waiting for that day. No, the day is already here. The victory is yours. You've just got to tread upon the lion and the cobra. You've got to tremble upon the devil and all of his dominions because he has given you authority and victory at the cross. Somebody say amen. Many people are hoping for God to heal them. But He already provided healing to us through Jesus Christ. God is waiting for us to take and possess what Jesus brought for us. That's right. Too many people think the blessings of God will just fall on them. But we have to put forth some effort also. For thou shalt tread, it says. You shall walk. Thou shalt tread. You shall tread. You shall move. You shall move in action means that we have to do something. Somebody say something. We've got to do something. We've got to do something and claim what is rightfully ours. We have to stand on the Word of God in faith until we see it and it becomes a reality within our lives. How much victory we experience depends on us, precious saints. If we don't tread upon sickness, disease and poverty, we will remain sick and poor. It's up to us to put the devil on the run by using our authority, standing firm in faith and thanking God for what He has already done for us because the Scripture tells us if we will resist the devil, he will flee from us, precious saints, according to James 4, 7. God has a plan, precious saints, but it requires action. Do you have the action today? Do you have the action that is needed to see the results, to see the blessing, to see the breakthrough? God wants to bring you to another level. Let me tell you, God wants to bring you to that another level so that then you'll be at a different level to be able to see where you have come from and the purpose of the suffering. Yes, there will be times of suffering that we will pass through because we decide to stand for Christ and Him alone. We are living in uncertain times and we need the hope of Christ, the hope of all glory, the hope of all nations in this hour. And I'm encouraging you, don't let fear, don't let setbacks, don't let the things of this world discourage you, but move forward into the destiny that God has for you, precious saints. Yes, He has a plan for your life, but it's up to us to walk in victory. When we enforce Christ's victory, we will receive everything that belongs to us, precious saints. When we enforce Christ's victory, when we enforce the heavens suffer in violence and the violent take it by force, when you enforce the victory of Jesus Christ over every area of your life let me tell you revival is coming precious saints revival is coming because the devil won't know what to do with somebody that wakes up you will become hell's worst nightmare yes when you pray you'll be sending hemorrhaging to the to the gates of hell because of your prayer you are sending pain to the enemy because He knows that you're walking in that finished work of the cross. He has good plans for you, precious saints. But you've got to exercise those plans. You've got to move forward, precious saints. You've got to say, God, I want to see a revival. I want to see my family come into the kingdom. I want to see a change in my life. But what am I willing to do? What am I willing to do? I'm going to move forward. 
I'm going to take action. I'm going to move in the finish work of the cross. Heavenly Father, I thank you for each person that is listening today. Lord, that you will come and touch them from the top of their head to the soles of their feet. Oh Lord, I pray for revival to come to your church. Oh Lord, that you will shake us up today. Oh Lord, we repent of all of our sins today. Lord, wash us with the blood of Jesus Christ. No sin, no past thing that you have done can stop you from moving forward. Just confess that sin today and He is faithful and just to forgive your sins and cleanse you from all unrighteousness. He is going to make a way where there seems no way. You've just got to push through. You've got to take action today. Oh Lord, the devil lives under our feet. Oh Lord, every trouble, every problem that people are facing today, your grace is sufficient. Oh Lord, stir up their faith today. Oh, the devil's in trouble today. Oh, the demons are in trouble today because people are arising. People are arising. People are arising to know who their true authority is in the finished work of the cross. Oh, come and touch your people. Lord, those people that need healing, claim your healing. Claim what is rightfully yours. Those that have marital issues, claim what is rightfully yours. You will have a blessed marriage. Your husband shall be saved. Your children shall be taught by the Lord and great shall be the peace of your children. Lord, I pray that they shall be blessed. Yes, for you shall provide for all of our needs according to your riches and glory in Christ Jesus. Oh Lord, provide for each person. Provide for them. Provide for them supernaturally in this hour. Oh God, open the doors of employment. Oh God, open the doors of opportunity. Oh God, God, open the doors of immigration. Whatever those hindrances are, we are moving forward. We are pressing forward in Jesus' name. We pray and believe. Amen and amen. This is Pastor Robert Clancy coming to you from Perth, Australia. It is time to catch the fire of repentance revival as we prepare for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Shalom, shalom, shalom. And precious saints, this is day four of the four day August prayer program. Precious saints, it's time to push in. If, Like I said at the beginning, if you haven't done this already, make a plan to do it, but really do it uninterrupted and make sure you read the program and allow it to absorb in. Get focused on the Lord in this hour. Precious saints, I will be now heading to Africa. Get ready, Kenya. This is your week. We shall be fasting on Thursday and Friday. Thursday in particular, we are fasting on behalf of Kenya. But if you have seen that flyer, I encourage you that as you join with us to pray for Kenya, let also you pray for your nation in exactly the same prayer because it's a prayer for nations in this hour. And I encourage us to fast this Thursday this Friday. Don't forget, we've also got the up and coming fast in September. Then we've got a 10 day fast in October, uh, linking in with the Hebrew New Year and also the Day of Atonement. So get ready for that also. But I'm coming to Kenya. Anybody in Kenya, you must come to this two day conference. Obviously it was three day, but we've declared a national fast for Kenya on Thursday and also encouraging the community of Christians worldwide to join in and also pray for their nation's precious saints and then also we are going to Zambia the following weekend then we're in Mozambique for two weekends we're in Maputo the city of Maputo and then we're in the city of Biera uh, and then we're off to South Africa and wherever the Lord leads after that so you must press in you must join it's up to you to participate if I come and sacrifice to come there, to leave my family as a missionary does. A missionary will leave his own family to come and also pray and to deliver other people's families. That's the sacrifice we take. So from my family to yours, God bless you. We love you. We are praying for you, precious saints. Shalom, shalom, shalom.